Okay. So we're going to tie a tzitzi today. So what you need to do is we're going to pass this bag around. How many of you brought your own string? <laughs> I don't have an <laughs> Okay. Right here. I think you said there's about 20 sets in there. Okay, well, yeah, so we'll probably... I'll start Um. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, because what you need is you need to pull out, for one seat seat, you're going to need three white ones and one long blue one. Okay. If for some reason you want to do four white, that's your business. But So I typically get mine in these little packages. Um, there's multiple places where you can get them. Um, I, I learned last week, we learned that Amazon carries them now, so that's probably the best place to get them because they stock, they stock them and they don't take so long to come from Israel. They come from Israel. We actually bought our breads from a fabric store. Yeah, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. I just like the, the traditional uh, materials. Which I believe is wool. Wool? I, 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 I can't remember. Wool, wool is uh, generally the. I think it's wool. The wool is wool. Like wow. these are wool. Okay. Looks like it. Yes, sir. So what you see here, this came out of one package, all right? And so you see, this is actually a whole set. It's for four, all right? It's for four different TTO. Who's wearing their TTO? It's for the four that you put around your your garment, okay? Uh, so we're gonna make we're gonna make only one, and so the white ones are these represent the blue. So what I'm doing is I'm taking these, and what we're doing at home is when we get a full set like this, we set these aside, and then when we get enough, Melanie, Melanie dyes them uh, into the chelet. Okay? So I'm only going to use this, and so there should be 12 of these. These are three times here, and then... And there are. So there's 12 of these. So I'm pulling out three. These are the, sh these are the short ones. Okay, the long ones are the blue? Yes. <laughs> yes. No, you don't have to dye them. That's what I said. That's what we do in our house. Okay, just why well, throw them away? They're there. You might as well use them. That's, you know, I'm just, I'm Jewish. What can I say? Frugal. <laughs> 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 so, he probably did. All right, I need one conversation going on, okay? So, again, I'm taking, there's 12 short ones. I'm taking three out so that we can tie one TT. Is everybody with me? Okay, so these are going home with me. They're mine. And I'm going to finish tying this set when I get time. Okay, so now you can get just the blue ones. <laughs> All right. And um, as I said, I believe Amazon is now selling these. And I, they sell both. It was Darren, I believe, who found them on Amazon. So you can get the white and the tahele on Amazon now. And that's a good thing because I, I, I just I had good success shopping at Amazon. So, um, and like I said, they stock them so you don't have to wait. If you order them from Israel, it takes a little longer for things to get here, especially if there's stuff going on and half of their people are out off in the army. Because they typically sometimes call up reserves and that will slow everything down leaving Israel. It does. You can wait for months for something. And you can't get mad at them because what are they going to do? They have to defend them. We end up swallowing this one. The other one tore easily. I don't know why this is so tough. Because the other one tore easily? Yeah. 
Okay, so in here there's going to be four Tehillic strings. And they will be long like the white ones that I'm, that I'm going to save for later to die, to make into this. Okay? Uh, if I die, then it won't be the official die of Israel. But that's okay. And I, I didn't manage to get all of them at once. So, they're actually very neatly bound that when you get them in the package, you just have can't be a moron like me and mess them up. I just tied this one in the knot. Um, so I'm going to use this one. And is Marcus not there? He is. Okay. Are you going to be able to zoom in? Okay. So I put knots in a couple of these. Okay, so these are going home with me. I'll finish tying the other three later. Obviously, there's four in a set. <coughs> I don't know if I'll be able to get them back in there. Okay, so. I believe I that Will, who donated the strings that you're going to use today, has pre-tied some of them in their first knot. Okay, so if you want to learn how to tie that knot, untie it. But if you know how to tie a knot, leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get ahead, <laughs> leave it there. I have to do it all. Okay. And it's not like I do this every day, so uh, I hope I got the right one. So what you're going to do is take all four of them, your three short ones and your one long one, and line them up on one end. I just keep grasping them in my fingers and try to get them as close to perfectly lined up at the top as I can. You're going to see that long one is almost twice as long as the others. Right? Now what you can do here We're going to tie, double it over so that the, the, the four ends on this side meet the three ends on this side. Do you understand why that is? Because yeah. one is longer than the other on that side. The blue one on this side is longer than the blue one on this side. Mm -hmm. Right? So line them up on this side as close as you can. And they'll move like they did for me a little bit, and they may not be precisely the same length. Don't worry about that. Scissors are a miraculous tool. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so, get them lined up as best you can. And double them over about halfway. And line them up down here. Alright. Now, if you, who in here I wish Darren was here because he was going to do this, but uh, who's tying one to a talit? Is anyone doing that today? No, no, I want to do it. You can, but is that the string you want to use? You can do it for practice. Practice, no. But if you wanted to do it for practice, because if you're tying it for a talit, you actually tie it on the talit. Yeah. Okay? If you're tying it for belt loop CTO or for transfer from one garment to the next, you're going to do what we're doing here. If you want to partner up, you could you could hold somebody could hold a finger up so that you can tie your knot on their finger and tie your tzitzit -tzit on their finger. I'm going to use something up here. I haven't decided yet. Probably that if it'll if it'll hold. I typically put it on a piece of furniture. It's my wine rack, if you must know, it it holds it well, and uh, it has a little hook on it. So I just put it on that hook and tie from there. 
when I'm trying to teach the oak for, for here. If you have blue jeans, you can also use a safety pin and do it, look at through the safety pin to time, have something to pull on. Sure, I mean, anything that'll, that'll do, that'll accomplish what we're talking about. Like this. Yes. Doorknob, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> uh, as long as you can get it off. You have to be able to get it off. Okay? Uh, if you're doing it to a tallit, it helps if you take the corner of the tallit and you place something heavy on the tallit, like a book. That's what I do. And in order to get it through the hole, you double it like this. And what I do is use a bobby pin. I take a bobby pin and run it right across the middle part where they where they fold it. Are you with me? So I put them in the bobby pin, and then I put the bobby pin through the tallit hole and pull them through that way. Okay? And at this side is what I'll pull through. All right, so you want it looped in the, in the hole on your tallit. Is everybody with me? Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do today, I guess I'll probably use this. I'm going to put mine right here, and I'm going to tie that first knot that is tied already for some of these. And I go basically a square knot if, if, according to Navy rules. <coughs> How are you going to get it off then? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I can't do that. Good eye! Good eye! I guess I'm going to have to untie it. Slide it I can slide it here, so I'm going to try to do it here. Do you want to use that handle then? Yeah, there you go. You can use that one. I wonder where that came from. I've never seen one of those before. You lie! <laughs> I know who you are. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah, I'm okay, so all I'm doing is right over left, left over right to make a knot. Okay? I gotta get my line back up. And if y'all wanna wait, we can you can watch and then Kelly and I can come around and assist you. Uh as you begin. But if you want to just go with us, just go with us. Okay, so I'm going to take one over the other. I'm going to wrap it around and pass it through. And I'm going to come up to about, I like mine at about an inch, maybe an inch and a half for the loop. I don't like them long. So a little bit longer, maybe an inch and a half. And then I just do that again the other way. I'm glad Kelly brought this little loop because it'll make it where I can pull as tight as I want. For those that still end up with granny knots, it's right over left and then left over right. Right over left, left over right for a square knot. Now I'm ready to begin winding. Okay. Now this is a sacred act, is it not? It is. Yes, sir. So there is a blessing to say. And the short blessing is, uh, let me think for a moment. The Shem Mitzvah Tzitzit. In the name of the commandment of the Tzitzit. Okay, so before I do start winding, that's what I'll say. It's the Shem Mitzvah Tzitzit. And I just say it to myself. I'm doing it myself in my house. It's not a big sanctimonious thing. Right? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... <coughs> After I've tied that square knot, I'm going to pull away the long tehel. And a good thing to do to keep track of the separateness of these, this one, the long tehel, goes with three of the strings. Uh, the short tehel goes with the other. So what I do is I tie a loose knot on this side just once. And I don't tighten it very tight because I want to untie it. But that helps me keep them separate. It's also easier if you just do a, a slip knot loop in the end, so you just pull it and it comes out. Tomato, tomato. Yeah. <laughs> That's for morons who don't know how to tie a loose knot. <laughs> Thank you. That's for army. <laughs> I ain't scared. <laughs> 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 
So then I'm going to take all of them but the long tahelet. This is the one that does the winding. Okay, this represents the priesthood. It represents Yeshua. Okay, so he's the one who binds us together. All the white ones are us. We dress in white as his priests. He dresses in this. He's the one who binds us all together. See it? Okay, so Leshem Mitzvah Tzitzit. I start to wind. And my first winding is ten. You can make it whatever your heart desires. Uh, no, my first winding is seven. Okay? My first winding is seven, and I'll explain that at the end. But you can make it whatever your heart desires. So I'm going to wrap it three times. I've gone twice so far. Three. Four. Five. Six. And... Seven. And then what I do is I rejoin them. I rejoin this long tachelet to its partners, its three partners. Okay? And then I separate them and I'm going to tie another knot. The shem mitzvah titi. I have a quick question about the method of count. When they're trying to do the count of the strands, if you if you look, I didn't go well. Hang on, You're messing me up. Sorry. <laughs> kind of listen to you and do this. Say that again. When, as you're looking around, what you're threading around at different points in your wrapping you can count different strands depending on whether you go from where it went out the top where it goes back into the, the mix at the bottom I do it where you're going from the back top. side as I look down I want to see seven okay I want to see seven wraps I see. that's what I do is I look down on it that's what I want to see so I'm going to try to do this second knot again. now what's the, the ten five seven I do seven ten five six five and I'll explain that in here because I do, I go 10, 5, 6, 5. That's all I do. Well, there's a reason I do it that way, and I've written it up and sh shared it. So, you know, 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 you Okay, so yeah, that's a half knot that I do. I don't do it twice there, I just do it once. And that includes the long one? Yes. Which is two minutes. Okay, but I rejoined the long one with its three. How do I know I have a tiny knot, I have a loose knot over here? Okay, now, okay, I can't have multiple conversations going on, Gabby excluded. I said she's excluded. So now I'm going to separate Yeshua from the rest. I'm going to get a firm grip on everybody else. The shim mitzvah tzitzit. Now I'm going to wrap ten. It's one. As I look at it, I see that thread going across there. So that's one, two, three, four. And make it neat. Make them edge on edge. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to hold it right there. I'm going to do this better than I did last time. Now I'm ready to tie my half knot again. It just takes a little getting used to. It'll be, you'll be clumsy at first, so you might want to just practice on regular thread or something. Which is kind of what today is about. Okay, so I've got seven, ten. Now I'm going to separate Yeshua from the rest. And I'm ready to go again. Alright? After that, it's just a process of repetition. Okay. 
So I've got seven, ten. Now I'm going to go five, six, five. So my next knot is five. So I'm ready to do it. Le shin meets butt, ti ti. I'm going to separate the shua out, bind the others, and wind again. One. How many reps is this? For me it's five. Two, three, four, and five. And I'm going to return the long one to its three. I'm going to tie my knot again. Oops. Did that wrong again? Don't do it every day. It's kind of by the time you do your second one, you'll be so good at it, you'll be surprised. Find an exercise. I have one more wine to do and one more knot, and I'll be done. So I'm going to remove, separate the shua from all the others. Join them at the top. And begin my wine. Seven, ten, five, six. This is number. This is five wines. One, two, three, four. I had some overlap, so I'm fixing that. So. Five. Now I'm going to separate or join the long one with his, his brothers. I'm going to do my final knot. And I'm, I'm taking out my loose knot now. Now, I, it's a half knot on the end. Okay? 
and <clears throat> what is advisable to do, and I'll do this when I get this one home, is boil some water, hold it over the sink, and pour some hot water on that knot, on that last knot. And it'll cause those strings to bind together and they won't come undone. So, you'll notice, you'll notice that this one is very, very long. I don't wear that when I wear belt loop CTO. It's not about show for me, okay? Um, this is about the length that I like, and that's dependent on how big you made your loop up here. Okay? But what I will do, and an Orthodox Jew won't do this, but I will come in and snip where they're all even. To include the Tehillah. Both Tehillah. So that they're all, hold it tight, and I'll come and trim it so that they're all the same length. And when Yeshua was talking about, where most people think that he was talking about Jewish phylacteries in, in the sense of the, uh, <coughs> um, drawing blank. Tephilim. It's a filling. Yeah. The box and the lining on the arm, that's not what he was talking about. He said, they make their tehillet long mm -hmm. for show. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's why, now on my tallit, I don't so much mind it. I typically leave it there on my tallit, but I might trim it a little bit because look how long that is. Okay. Uh, it is okay to have that one a little bit longer because who does it represent? It's your shoe. Okay. So, so 10, 7, 10, 5, 6, 5. You might ask why. I am an Ashkenazi Jew. The Ashkenazi way is 13, 10, 13, 10, 7, 4, or something like that. I can't even remember. 7, 8, 11, 13. 13, or 7, 8, 11, 13, yeah. So I'm an Ashkenazi, but I happen to like the way the Sephards do it. Ashkenazi means Jews who primarily come out of Germany. Uh, Sephards are Jews who primarily come out of Spain. Okay, uh, I like the Sephard method, which is ten five six five. Okay, and the reason I like that is because that She writes on her board. She holds her hand on this one. 10, 5, 6, 5 is the value of the name of the Yahweh. Each letter in his name. So I like that one, but I am an Ashkenazi, and I happen to like having seven at the top. Because I went without Shabbat for much of my life. And the seven represents the Shabbat to me. Um, so I took this, and so we have instead of four windings, we have five, seven, ten, five, six, five. I went without Torah all my life, which is represented by five books. Not all my life, because I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm old now. <laughs> but for a long time, I went without Torah, and so when I started doing this, I I see that I have. That's a seven, not a yield. It looks a lot like my yield. That's better. Um, so I went without Shabbat for so long, and I went without the fullness of Torah for so long that it was a joy to me. And so this honors my Ashkenazi Jews, my ancestors, because that's the first, I think that is the first number in their series. Yes. Okay. So it's the first number in the series of Ashkenazi taunt winding, and then this is the Sephard way, and I like having both represented because we're not different people. We just spent some time in different areas for a while. <laughs> right? Adopting different different language uh, for, for our everyday lives. But we're still all Jews, right? So you can see the picture. So that's how I do it. And I do that both on my tallit and when I wear the beard. Now, I'm going to be a on this one. If you think it's a body, 
I can't remember. They have a meaning, they have a reason why they do it that way. What are they again? It means the numbers are 7, 8, 11, 13, which means Hashem Echad is how Yeah, Wach Echad, Ushmo Echad, or something like that. I believe that's what it is. And the way that they count them along with the other various thread or There are other communities. The Karaites have their own way of tying them. And then the Yemenites, who, who tied it? Lance, I believe, tied his talit in, in the Yemenite way. And, and the method is even different. It's pretty. It's beautiful. I might actually tie something like that someday for myself. So, um, but I, and even if I do it the Yemenite way, I'll still use the same winding series because of what it means to me. Okay, so this is, we're not commanded to tie it this way, and I'm not commanding you to tie it this way. I'm just giving you why I tie it this way. Is everybody clear on that? Yeah. Um, why we've had so many variations to represent the same thing? Because there are communities of Jews scattered all over the world and have been for thousands of years. And everybody made their own? They just developed their own tradition. Because the Torah commands us to tie TTC in number right. 15, but it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't give you the exact number. It doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> specify how. And so Abba leaves it open to personal interpretation as far as, as, far as what, what you do here. Now, he specifically said, put a thread of Tehillah in it. That is commanded. He specifically said to make one. He did not specify how many knots. This is how it's done. Generally, this is the method. No, I was just using. I'm, I'm, I know. Let me finish. Sure. Okay. Uh, so he he did not specify how many knots or. Uh, but strong custom tells us that they use wool. That's not commanded. But the preponderance of evidence is they were shepherds. <laughs> they got their string from wool. All right, so that's why I like to do wool. Okay, if someone does cotton, that's fine. We don't we, we don't police these things here. We've actually had some people try to police these things, and you need to know this. If someone starts policing other people's TTO, they need to be reprimanded. That is none of your business. Now, if someone comes in here and has TTO dragging the ground and, you know, strings about this wild floating in <laughs> Look at me! Then it needs to be addressed! Because their heart is not in it for the right reason. They're trying to be... I love having you in my classes. I get it. I get it. Uh, their heart is not in it for the right reason. If, if your own heart tells you you want to do it the Yemenite way, maybe you, maybe you found out you had a Yemenite grandfather. Wonderful! Do it that way. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I got confused because we are no rabbinic, and it seems to me that this is a rabbinic. Is that the answer? Not at all. It's not rabbinic. It's not rabbinic. Okay. Because it's not, they, they don't even tell you this. The rabbis don't tell you how to do this. It's just customs. It's, it's not permitted because the Torah tells us to tie these. Yeah, I know. I know that it's a side. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is the rabbis have never written down a method that said, Thou shalt do it this way. This is purely custom. It's okay. You look, you look in the scriptures, and it is okay for Jewish communities to develop their own customs. Because, traditionally, Jews do not eat fajita. Did you know that? Beef. Beef. Well, the reason I said it that way is because fajita is a cut of meat. It's the thigh. Okay? And so Jewish people do not eat the thigh, the inner thigh of a, of a cow. And it was not commanded that they not do that. However, it is in the Torah. For this reason, our people do not eat this meat because Jacob limped on his thigh. All right? So it was a custom adopted. Abba did not command it, but neither did he say, you eat your fajita meat. <laughs> right? Same thing. Same thing with Purim. Purim, giving of gifts at Purim was not commanded, but neither did Abba stop them from doing it. Same thing with Hanukkah. Hanukkah is not a commanded feast, but it did not stop Yeshua from participating. It did not stop him from showing up and, and participating in Hanukkah. It's okay to develop customs as long as the custom doesn't overturn the Torah. If it overturns the Torah, 
then it's wrong. Or, if you teach it, if I were to tell you this and say, God said you have to do it this way, then it becomes sin. Then it becomes rabbinic. Okay, but the rabbis don't even do that, and that's why you have variations in all the communities. Yeah, last question. And, and you know, it's just because I'm meeting with different, um, you know, talking to, I talk to different Jewish, you know, people, and I get it. So I'm going to stop that. <laughs> but, Good idea. But, um, the, they, they, I've been told that only men can, can use the music. That's not me. That is customary. And in some ancient Jewish customs, in some communities, women wore TCO. It depends on the community. We don't forbid it here. We don't tell our women they must, but we also do not forbid it. My wife, my wife wore TCO. Yeah, well, the reason is because the women that were single, I mean, we don't have, you know. The command, the command is given in the masculine, but many commands are given in the masculine that also apply to women, okay? And this one is unclear. But it, it says, say to the children of Israel, you shall make. Okay? So a lot of our women do it. But we leave that to personal halakha because customarily it has not been women doing it. Okay? And the visual is if a woman is married, a lot of our married women don't wear them because they see their husband as their covering. But a woman who is single might want to wear them to get the thing carried out in the household. Especially if she has a husband who's not doing it, it might compel him to do it, and then she can relieve herself of it. Are you with me? Yes. Okay, so again, it's not specific. Um, it's not directly commanded to women. In other words, you don't see it in the feminine when you see the commandment. But it also does not say women shall not do it. I'm going to uh, leave to me, but it's from Israel, but it has got the blue thread. Why not? Why did they not find it? Because for a long time they didn't, they weren't convinced what color this was and how to make it. But so that has been resolved. Um, the snail from which they make this ink is very rare. And the, uh, when they got back to Israel, they found this snail again. They were able to start making this dye again. Okay, so, but for thousands of years, in honor of the temple, they would not tie it even if they had the dot. Because they were outside the land and they had no temple. We have a temple. We have a high priest. Amen. And this is the color he wears. Amen. Right? So, uh, this represents Yeshua, like we talked about. So, that's why I want it. Yeah. And, and I prefer my Tehillah to come from Israel. You see, you get blue dye all over your fingers if it's the real stuff. Where do you buy it? Amazon. Oh. You get it online. Uh, well, just world just order. Com. Just order to sell it. TTO strength. We're very aware of the the uh, leaders. I forget what you said that war against them. You should have commented on it. Were they aware of what you're saying now that the blue represents Christ? Well, they, they wouldn't call him Christ, and they wouldn't, Yeshua. Uh, Mashiach, they wouldn't see it that way. Yeshua himself knew, right. and the those who were coming to him, I believe, probably understood it, and it was so powerful that the woman who was crawling on her hands and knees trying to get to him said, if I just touch this, if I could just touch this, I know I'll be healed. So I believe she understood that. Yeshua wore it, and I guarantee you it had a thread of blue in it, and that's what she reached for and grabbed and was healed because of her trust, just knowing that if I touch the high priest, I'll be healed. So I believe she understood it, and probably the, the Talmudim did, or at least at some point they got to that point because they wrote about it. But the Jews themselves, especially those who were making up their own rules, That's what they didn't get it. They didn't see it. Yeah. And the question as far as the color, and we touched a little bit on it, but um, why, is, why is it not scarlet to represent the because this is about this is about not breaking the Sabbath, and the priesthood is the authority of Israel. This was this was given in number fifteen after God just broke the Sabbath. Okay, and so to keep to help Israel remember, you're all the priesthood, and you're all responsible for making sure that all of Israel keeps the Sabbath. It was the color of the high priest. 
part of the high priest, yeah. versus the scarlet, which would represent Yeshua as blood. Well, this represents Yeshua as well. Because it's a purplish color, it's it's a colors of royalty. The snail itself, you have to be in the monies to get it. It's extremely rare because it's so hard to find. It's expensive, so there's a. a well, she's looking for the, she's looking there. for the spiritual reason. Well, the spiritual the reason is Numbers fifteen thirty eight. That's the command from Elohim himself. Let, let me speak. <laughs> uh, it's not necessary to represent the scarlet here because we're not talking about atonement. We're talking about reminding us of ourselves that we are the priesthood. Okay, so the blood is for atonement, which is a forgiveness of sin. The idea is not to sin once you become a believer. <laughs> yeah. The goal is not to sin. And when you recognize I'm a priest, you know, you're less apt to go off into error. You know, when you recognize that the commandment is what guides my life, then you're less apt to go off into the error. So the scarlet of the blood is used in the sacrifices and not in the method to prevent from the need for sacrifice. <laughs> Although you're always going to need it, the idea is not to do it. Amen. But if you read like Leviticus and everything, where it's told what the high priest is supposed to wear, that color is specified. just wearing that all over the place. So he's wearing that color, the high priest. When he was and that's Yeshua. This is his cup. The only how we get is Deuteronomy 12, 22. And it specifically says the four corners of the garment that covers. You might you might ask why I don't wear why I don't wear them in here. The reason is because I have a lead out there. And it actually says in Deuteronomy, is it 12? 12, 22. Yeah. On the four corners of your garment. I don't want a CTO hanging off of me on on Shabbat because I'm overdoing it. So in my mind, I only want four because that's what the commandment says. And it, it, I'm just that way. I want to do what he says and nothing more and nothing less. I don't want to come in here with two on, right? And I don't want to have eight on. So I don't. It's okay that other men do that, but for myself, I can't do it. I won't do it because I, he said on the four corners of your garment. So I put my TTO, TTO on after I leave here. If I go somewhere else once I leave the house, I will have them on. But while I'm here and when I pray at home under my tallit, I only have four. Okay. So that that's very, he was very specific about that. So I'm very specific about how I do it. And of course, we regularly put them on our belt loops, which is not a four corner garment. We're okay with that, but there are some Jews who almost think that's offensive, don't they? To them, yeah, they kind of don't like it. They're getting used to it. Oh. I, I actually ran into an Orthodox Jew in the airport, and he had CTO down past his knees. And I just knew that he was going to balk at what I was wearing, but he didn't. He's like, hey, my brother! It's, it's starting to change. It's starting There's to change. Their attitude is starting. They're, they're starting to get to like the fact that other people are, in, they think, emulating them. Yes. So the attitude is changing. <laughs> and the other thing is also the Jews are offended by you not wearing a keeper when you wear a tilt. Yeah, they are. And yeah. that kind of bothers me, to be honest. Uh, but we again, the, the keeper is not directly commanded, but we are priests. And when you worship in the temple, the priests wore a head cover yeah. while they ministered. And so for me, and the reason I, I do this kind, Kelly does that kind because he has a big head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I have really short hair now, and it's what I don't know, I can't. I don't he can't put it with the clips in his hair. That's why. I, you know me. I'm going to gouge him any chances. <laughs> 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 so, uh, I like this kind because it is the most common among all Jews everywhere. This is just the most common kind. And to me, it represents a crown. Um, he says that he will crown us with a crown of glory, that, that we will inherit a crown of life. Um, not that I think I'm a king, but, I, but that I'm looking forward because this is not a crown, but it reminds me because there's a scripture in Revelation that says, Do not let any man take your crown. Okay? And so this is a reminder how do people take your crown? By bringing you into error, by causing you to sin. Whether that be a, a seductress woman or, or a, 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 a shady businessman bringing you into a bad business deal or a politician, a 
politician, <laughs> or any human being who does not have the mind of Elohim will take you out from under his covering. And so this, I feel mine all day long. You pretty much know it's with you. And so it's a constant reminder that Elohim is above me and I need to be obedient to the other people looking at they remind you too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it identifies me with my people, the Jews. And so that's why I like this particular style because they all know what this is. Okay? That one in Israel is pretty common. Over here, not so much. But you're starting to see those. Uh, there are others that Jews wear that look a lot like what Muslims wear. I can't do that. That's just me. I don't. I'm a Middle Eastern looking guy. And I don't want to get up. Especially in the summer. And I don't want to be mistaken. So, uh, and because I tan in the summer. Uh, I get very dark. Uh, I look like a middle, it almost got me in trouble in Israel because I was very dark in Israel. My hair was long and curly. I looked very Middle Eastern, talked with a funny accent. They almost didn't let me out of the country. They almost put me in jail. Um, what? Had done that went fast. <laughs> Did everybody get one tied? No. Just watched? Did you get it on video? Okay, so it'll be up. In a couple of days, a day or two, it'll be up and you'll be able to do it in the privacy of your home without getting embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so I'll come and put it through my belt and then do that and pull it through. The five and the six are the representative of His name, the letters in his name. The A is a value of five and the Bob is a value of six. And, uh, each each Hebrew letter has a numeric value. They don't have. Okay, shake it, Shabaka Shah. They don't have. They don't have a separate symbols of numbers. Okay, so each each Hebrew letter has a numeric value, and so this ten five six five is the numeric value of his name. Yod Hey Vav Hey. The, 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 interestingly, I'll go ahead and put it up here. Uh, the Zion is a numeric seven. The seventh letter is a Zion, and it's a sword, which has all kinds of meaning in regard to the priesthood as well, because Yeshua carries a sword, does he not? There you go. All right. Shabbat shalom. Let's go. Thank you, sir. I need to